guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And today's game up on the tabletop is Tang Garden by Thundergriff Games. Tang Garden plays one to four players, takes about an hour to an hour and a half, and is for ages 12 and up. And in the game Tang Garden, you are building a Japanese garden. You are going around and gathering different decorations as well as different areas to place onto a board, and you're going to populate the board and make your own unique garden among your other friends. Now, of course, they are also competing, attempting to gather the most favor and points at the end of the game. Use your wits and strategy to either gather the correct decoration or placement tile, and then facilitate it by placing it on the board in the required spaces. And then, if you're lucky, gathering additional little characters that you can kind of face and have them stare off into the horizon, and hopefully gather you even more points at the end of the game. The game will end after there's only so many places left to place, or one of the deck runs out, and then whoever has the most points like I said is the winner of the game straightforward and simple but it looks very complex let's go ahead and get into how you basically can play the game I'll give you some very simplistic aspects of how it's played as well as show you what comes in the game and then after that we will review it won't we here is Tang Garden, and as you can see, it looks pretty foreboding at first, but we can go ahead and break it down pretty simply, and then you can determine how it is played, and this is actually rather easy. You're going to have all of these decorations. These are all decorations, all these things here, and you're going to basically set them aside. Don't worry about them just yet. You're also then going to go ahead and take the small ones after putting them in a stack and put four of them in these areas here. You'll have these little tokens here, and you're going to go ahead and place them just like this, unless you're playing in a two-player game, in which case it'll be shortened, so the length of the game will be less, but you'll understand that in a second. Placing the tiles is pretty simple as well. They're going to have a location where you place them, and you're going to put them based on the color, and then you're going to go ahead and flip them all over, so every single one should be face down except for the top one here. There is the basic area in which you're placing the main board. You can't miss it. It's pretty standard, and you're going to have coins as well as these little tokens which will be setting up your player board. Shuffle the deck of characters and deal out two of them, place the characters that represent those characters on top of the cards, set the rest of the characters aside, and shuffle the decoration deck. This is the first player marker. Choose a player to start and place it there. Everybody's going to get cubes, place them in the far left hand slot based on the color, and give everybody these four tokens. Place them on these little areas here, their front and back, to determine whether or not you've used the ability during the game or not. You could use them once per game, unless otherwise stated. And, of course, everybody gets their own unique character to start the game off with. Then, you're pretty much ready to go. And to begin the game, I'm not going to explain it fully because there's a whole lot to talk about as far as strategy goes and the different types of cards and decorations. But what I will say is, you'll be choosing one of these four on your turn as one action, or you'll choose to draw cards as decorations. Your decoration hand will be two cards plus X. X will be the number of face down tiles. So for instance, if these two have already been used and placed on the board in some way, uh, then you're going to get two plus X and X being two, because there's two face down tiles here. So you'll draw four cards and then you'll choose one of them and then you'll use that to place a decoration. I'll go ahead and put these back here though. When placing tiles, simply know that like will go with like, unless there's a red barrier. So for instance, if I wanted to place this here, I could place it just like that and it attaches. So foresty with foresty areas, water with water areas, and of course rock with rock areas, and then there's of course pathways. The last thing is this little red barrier. This red barrier does not care, it attaches however it likes. And when you place these guys down, you're going to then check to see if you've accomplished any goals. Every time you attach a road to a road, you're going to gain coins. If you attach water to water, you'll gain water. And it shows you here. And you'll move these little tracks up, whether it be one of these three different colors, based on what you place down. And then if you close off certain areas, so if you close off a full set of water. So, for instance, if this was placed here, and on the next player of their turn, they took this and placed this here, if it were possible. This would close off this water area. And that's a way to score additional movement in this area here, this water area. So you can actually move up to even three times per turn. So basically, on your turn, choose one of these or choose from the deck here. And eventually, you're going to uh, replace these guys down. And how this works is whenever somebody takes decorations, if there are ever uh, any tiles here missing because players have placed them on the board, these will get flipped over. So with more choice on the board here gives you less choice for decorations. With less choice on the board here gives you more choice for decorations. And then you have your player abilities. Some will let you move your characters that you'll be placing on the board in the character spots, and you'll also be angling them based on what they're looking at, which will give you points. 
and you're going to be drawing new ones and placing new ones out, scoring you points whenever you get certain requirements met. So if you get all these colors here, for instance, you're going to be able to do that as well. And you'll also be getting coins and currency as you progress this track. So there's a lot of different ways you can score. There's tableau management, these decorations, whether you're placing down something like a bridge, which are these guys here on a bridge space, or whether you're placing something like a pavilion on a pavilion space, these are going to score you points as well, and it'll tell you how it works based on card collections, because you'll be keeping these decorations throughout the game. And hopefully, by the end of the game, which is going to trigger in one of two ways, either one of these decks is completely removed, or if somebody manages to collect all of these tokens, or everybody manages to collect all these tokens, except for just three of them which case the game will end and it gets fair and even turns. And that's pretty much it. You're going to tally up your coins or tally up any points you have from either the characters as well as the different cards, whether it be set collection, explained like that, or whether it be just simply gaining points from specific cards. And then you'll see who has the most, and whoever has the most is the winner in Tang Garden. It's pretty simple. It looks pretty complex, but when you get a sense of it, player board, main board, bunch of decorations, and it's all based on just one of two actions. The game's really simple and really easy to understand with a lot of complex strategy. Let's go ahead and discuss it. So let's get into the meat and potatoes of the game, but before we do that, let me make one small extra little caveat that I think is important in my basic overview of the rules. All those tokens on the board that I said when there's only three left, you're going to be then ending the game and you're going to be placing tiles on them and collecting these. When you collect these tokens, if they're the ones on the outside of the board, you'll actually get uh, these big these big guys here and these big guys here you can choose one of, of the two diff one of the top two stacks and they'll place them on the board so they're going to basically fill out the outside of the board and they'll have symbols on them where you're going to have your characters looking and facing in that direction to gain points and each character character functions in a different way so it's going to make out the outside of the box and the ones that are on the inner circle those are ones going to be for the smaller decorations and the smaller ones are going to contribute the same as the large ones and just their symbols are not going to be as useful so kind of you're going to kind of configure not only the board in the middle as well as the tiles and the decorations but also kind of the landscape outside and that being said that makes up the beauty of this game this game is a rather simple puzzler where you're going to be choosing between one of two actions and simply placing down tiles or de decorations as well as the outskirts and trying to manipulate your strategy the best you possibly can are you going to go the tableau collection route where you're trying to place as many of the different trees as possible to score as many points as you can maybe you want to go with koi's and lilies where you attach them together to score bonus points for each pair you set even though there's only a specific amount of each type even though the decoration deck gets reshuffled which is important because it doesn't say in the rules but yes the decoration deck will get reshuffled after you go through it so just know that i had to search on bgg so you're welcome uh <laughs> nevertheless though the component quality in this game is beautiful they did an excellent job with this game as far as components go some people might say overproduced but in my opinion the aesthetic of this gives it a large value okay just like games like everdell do a really high service to the game whereas a game like grim forest is not so much something that i'd probably consider a little more overproduced in that aspect because a lot of things don't actually do anything when you utilize them they're just they're just there but this actually when you add things to the board they stay there and it makes this unique style every single time you put the game together and it changes every game you play it's never going to be played the same way you're never going to get the same tiles in the same order and you're never going to place them in the same way as well so the fact that there's all these different things that are kind of manipulating the board into making this beautiful tang garden makes the game so beautiful to look at and it's such a high plus in my opinion I really liked playing this game. I like set collection and tableau management, and that's how I focused on this game, where my wife is a puzzler. She likes to put the pieces together and connect like with like in that simple uh, area management in the middle of the board, and that's how she plays the game. And so we can kind of play our own unique game while still playing the same game together, which is cool because I'm not a great puzzler, but I am good at tableau management, engine building, and set collection. And so that's where I focused my priorities on then Grant, he is the type of guy who likes to simply take the characters and organize them based on the landscape, and that grants you a ton of points as well. You can win a myriad of different ways, you can do all of the above, or you can stick to one specific route throughout the entire game, which gives it a lot of diversity and a beautiful sense of being able to choose what you want, when you want, and switch up your strategy mid-game and still manage to pull out a win if you are creative, if you decide the best spots, and if you get a little lucky. Most of this game is simple strategy that doesn't involve a whole lot of luck, but when you're looking for that last tree, 
and you have to dig through that decoration deck and maybe it's at the bottom, maybe it's not. There's where the luck comes in. Uh, but what's also interesting is you have abilities. When you use them once a game, that will let you do something like, I can search through the entire stack of these decoration or these uh, tiles and find the one I want and place it on the board. That's one ability, as well as searching through the deck of characters and being able to select one. Or I can change the position of one of my characters as well as the angle or direction, which can score me more points, being able to place two tiles or to place two decorations from a large sum of decorations that you can choose from. Utilizing those is so important. When and how you choose to utilize certain things will make a big difference in the game. I'm trying to think of a negative thing about Tang Garden, and I guess the main thing is the setup of the game. It is quite a bit of setup. You're going to have to, to figure out the layout and put everything together, depending on the number of players, will basically change um, how you're playing the game, whether it's two or three players or four players, two or three or four. In a two player game, it's not that much of a different change though. It just simplifies it by shortening the game. However, you're still playing the same style and strategy. Two, three and four players works beautifully throughout this game. It doesn't matter how many players you're playing with. However, I like playing with more players in this game because it's very dynamic and your choices will kind of run out, but you'll have different options with those more players. So you're not gonna get the simple direct strategy because other players are also going to be going for that as well. Uh, this game is wonderful. Quality artwork, quality design, as well as thickness on all of the pieces, all of the boards, heavily, heavily thought out, different strategies. It feels really good to play. I personally like the game a whole lot. This is one of the games I would definitely recommend. My wife enjoyed the game and my buddies who have played with me enjoyed the game as well. It's something that we'll see play quite a bit, but it's going to be one of those games that I probably have to be in the mood for just because of the setup and the organization that I'm going to have to put in, as well as the mental taxing. There's a bit of taxation as to how and when you want to play and what you want to play. Putting down, it's not one of those games where you just simply bring out play a really quick game and then set out set, set aside because sometimes you're going to want to play another game after your first one that's how cool the game can be but at the same time you, you might dedicate an entire night to playing tang garden because this game is one of those things that wraps your head around and especially after the first game players who are new and figure out how the game works because you'll need at least one or two games to get into this to understand the full amount of what you're doing even though it's so simple uh, and basic as far as what you choose to do there's a lot of choice and that i guess could go either way if you have any negatives down below let me know what you thought of the game but personally this is one i really really enjoyed and it's one i'd strongly suggest you take a look at as well tang garden by thundergriff games and also lucky duck has made it worldwide so they're going to be bringing this out to the world it's how i got the game to go ahead and spread some more love on social media to show you why you should pick up tang garden and the beautiful high quality game that it is thank you for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review for the game tang garden by thundergriff games if you're interested in picking the game up go down below link in the description where you can go ahead and pick up the game it's either them or lucky duck depending on what country you're from maybe a little bit of hyperbole as they would say as far as that goes but they lucky duck is shipping them out to uh, other countries you know how they do stuff for france and germany and whatnot so they kind of change the game's languages it's a kind of a cool little thing but they usually send me their games whenever they're gonna ship them out so anyway definitely take a look at it if something that interests you this is a highly popular game and a lot of people really do enjoy it as some people have given me critiques but i can't remember what they are and i didn't have those critiques so i didn't actually i didn't actually remember them so if you do you can go ahead and leave them down below in the description though and let me know what you think i'm quite interested to know what you think as far as this game goes because personally i really enjoyed it and i love the style and quality of it and i'm curious do you think it's overproduced and if so why all right as well as checking out unfilteredgamer.com tons of blog posts giveaways kickstarter lists and more the site will be revamped in the next week or two so you get to see a ton of great new content i'm very very excited to unveil our new release of the new website as well as we'll do a huge giveaway to kind of introduce the site and show you all the new content that we're going to be releasing it'll be a lot of fun and don't forget to check out our live stream every wednesday 6 30 p.m pst we play games just like this one live on stream where you can go ahead and play with us in some ways as well as just being participate participants in a lot of different crazy stuff we do whether it be trivia whether it be out of participation games or just simply rooting for who you think will win in the newest kickstarter style games out there all right guys that's all i got for you for this one and as always i look forward to building a tang garden with you next time